patient is a 79-year-old female who suffered a three-part humeral head fracture with head split after a fall down the stairs. Radiologically, a dislocated multi-part humeral head fracture with significant osteoarthritis is seen. In CT, an additional head split component with varus dislocation of the humeral head fragment is visualized. The deltopectoral skin incision lies approximately 2 cm lateral of the deltopectoral interval. The cephalic vein is exposed and retracted laterally. The joint capsule is open and the fracture hematoma is removed. The biceps tendon is mobilized and tenodesis is performed. opening of the interval to mobilize the subscapular tendon. The bone tendon transition is secured with non-resorbable sutures using a modified Mason-Allen technique. In the same manner, securing the transition from the greater tuberosity to the infraspinatus tendon. The humeral head is extracted with an elevator. The extent of the injury with existing osteoarthritis is visualized. For exposure of the glenoid, the humeral shaft is retracted dorsal and cut off. Excision of the supraspinatus tendon. After circumferential capsulotomy and excision of the labrum, the midline of the glenoid is marked with electrocautery. The metaglen drill guide is placed flush with the inferior rim of the glenoid. A K wire is drilled centrally into the glenoid. The cartilage is removed with a circular reamer and in a second step with an asymmetric reamer. The first hole is drilled for the superior anchor peg of the metaglen. To prevent rotation, a fixation peg is used. The second hole is then drilled for the inferior peg. The two peg metaglen is impacted until it sits stable, directly against the glenoid. Slightly convergent holes are drilled to accept cortical bone screws. Das ist jetzt 20.
The depth of the holes are measured and the screws are inserted. The screws are tightened alternately. A variable angle locking screw is placed in the direction of the coracoid base. Warte mal, mach mal die Schraube aus noch schnell. Und zwar brauchen wir jetzt eine 30er 4. Äh, da haben wir ja viel Material nicht ohne Ende. Wir fangen uns den Knochen da ein bisschen weg. Nehmen wir einen The polyethylene glenosphere is snapped into place against the base plate and checked for stability. The fixation screw is inserted. Four holes are drilled in the humeral shaft to accept two non-resorbable sutures. The cement restrictor plug size is determined. Temporary connection of the inverse trial central component to the stem for evaluation of the soft tissue tension. Implantation of the cement restrictor plug and bone cement. The prosthesis stem is inserted. The rotation can be determined later. Removal of the excess cement. After cement hardening, the trial central component is removed. Bone voids are filled with cancellous bone. Placement of the definitive fracture inverse central component. The desired retroversion of 15 to 20 degrees is set by comparing the direction of a K-wire pointer to the forearm. Secondary loosening is prevented by tightening the body with a torque wrench and counter wrench. Deformation of the pointer to the edge of the handle shows the appropriate torque was achieved. Insertion of a titanium cable through the lower transverse hole and a non-resorbable suture through the upper transverse hole for the refixation of the tuberosities. Repositioning of the greater tuberosity. Incision at the tendon insertion. Threading the cable through the bone tendon transition. 
reduction of the prosthesis. Repositioning the tuberosities while avoiding excessive tension. The upper suture is tied through the front edge of the infraspinatus tendon and through the upper edge of the subscapularis tendon. Tension-free repositioning of the tuberosities to the implant body. The intertubercular sutures are tied. Sutures are then placed from the shaft to the minor and major tuberosities. They are tightened and tied as a tension band. Remaining bone voids are filled with chips of cancellous bone. The titanium cable is tightened. With the tensioning instrument, the cable is tightened without deforming the two porosities. A crimping instrument is used to fix the cable. The cranial sutures are tied provide compression of the tuberosities against each other. Rotation of the arm to check for stability of refixation. There is no movement of the tuberosities against the implant central component. The range of motion is demonstrated. Abduction to 150 degrees, external rotation to 40 degrees. Placement of suction drainage. Adapting muscle sutures. <laughs> Subcutaneous sutures and closure of the skin. Follow-up x-ray at four days post-operatively.